Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to get the Whisper of the Worm and beat the normal mission solo without using the Whisper. I can't promise this will be easy or that you'll even get it on your first try, but I did spend hours upon hours yesterday testing different loadouts, different methods, different supers and strategies completely solo to see what would be the easiest way to complete this mission by yourself. Before we get into any recommended loadouts, I'll quickly go over how to even get to the mission for those who aren't well acquainted with the whole Whisper quest. If you already know this stuff, you can skip ahead to the time on the screen. Every weekend, the Whisper of the Worm mission goes live. For me, since I live in the US, the Whisper mission goes live Friday at 1pm, which is reset time for me, and ends on Monday, also at reset time. The only way to get into the mission is by heading to IO, traveling to the Lost Oasis patrol zone, and waiting for a Taken Blight public event. This event can spawn in three locations around the Lost Oasis, and once the event begins, a special enemy either a giant Taken Knight, Taken Captain, or Taken Centurion will spawn in one of three locations. You'll need to seek the enemy out and kill them to open up a portal. Once entering the portal, you will be put into the Whisper mission and you have 20 minutes to beat it. Once time runs out, you'll have to wait for another Taken Blight event to retry it. If you beat it, a heroic version will pop up on your map. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about how we're going to approach this mission. There are four rooms within the Whisper mission total. Each of the rooms I like to consider a different encounter. The first one is full of Taken Vandals, Taken Captains, Taken Thrall, and Taken Goblins. The only shields in this room are solar shields from the Captains, meaning we'll need a solar weapon. The second encounter, it's best to use your super on since it's a very small room with really no space to fight in it. Taken Captains and Vandals are the enemies for this room again, so solar shields for those captains. The third encounter has a mix of void shields found on the wizards and acolytes, while the taken knights have solar shields. This means we'll also need to bring a void weapon. The final encounter or the boss room has taken cabal phalanxes and centurions that have arc shields, so we'll need an arc weapon for that room, just in case our super can't finish those guys off. For this mission, I would actually highly recommend switching between two supers. Trying to clear the final room out with anything but an arc super is going to be a bit of a nightmare, and trying to clear out the second encounter with anything but a solar super is pretty difficult. I'll show you when you should be switching supers later in the mission. So the weapons I was using for this were Dread Adventure in my primary slot, which is a decent sniper with a lot of impact, and mine didn't roll with any crazy perks or anything, so just a normal Dread Adventure shall do. For secondary, I'm using a few different weapons throughout the mission. First one is Right Side of Wrong, because pulse rifles are in an amazing spot right now, and this was literally the only solar pulse I have. I was also using Inaugural Address, which is a good void pulse rifle for from the Leviathan Raid. Great weapon, rolls with Outlaw and Kill Clip, and for the final room, it's good to have a weapon with a high rate of fire like a 720 RPM auto rifle or a 900 RPM SMG, preferably ARC. The Misfit auto rifle is good, the Valkadin is good, Trackless Waste, there's a ton of good weapons, but if you're not confident in your super abilities, I'd recommend bringing an ARC one just in case. Now if you're on PC, you should just be fine with using one of the pulses I mentioned to damage, because a lot of weapons on PC have virtually no recoil, so it's much easier to hit your crits. But trying to do the same thing on console from the distance we'll be shooting at is extremely unreliable, and you more than likely won't be able to do enough damage, so that's why I'm going to suggest bringing Polaris Lance. Even though scout rifles are bugged and they do a little less damage than most other weapons right now, it's still a much better option for those of us on console. Not to mention it basically has unlimited ammo in this fight and you'll see later ammo is going to be a huge problem. And last but not least I'd recommend Sleeper Simulant for your heavy weapon. Sleeper is a monster and your next best option after the Whisper itself. When it comes to subclasses you'll want to start out on a solar subclass and then change to arc. Exotics that are great for this mission are Shards of Galanor for the Hunter's Blade Barrage, Super, Raid in Flux for an Arc Strider Hunter, Insurmountable Skull Fort for the Striker Titan, Syntheseps for the Sunbreaker Titan, Starfire Protocol for Dawnblade Warlocks, and Crown of Tempest for the Warlocks Storm Trance Super. All of the things I just recommended were simply suggestions, not requirements. After doing a bunch of runs, the things that I suggested seemed to help out the most, at least for me. Of course, your weapons will be the most flexible part of this guide. You can interchange them to whatever you feel comfortable with using. When it comes to light level, it doesn't really Really matter too much. I did runs at 530 and runs at 570 and at that point you're so high above the enemy level that the difference in level hardly matters. The enemies still scale up to be a challenge even if you're over 100 levels above them. So being 550 is really not going to be any easier than being 500. In the footage you're
you're watching, I wasn't using any special exotics like stompies to make these jumps. You can do the jumping puzzle easily without needing any exotics to enhance your mobility. You'll want to do your best to make it through the jumping puzzle in under 5 minutes. And while you can speed run the first part in like 2.5 minutes, try and aim for 4 to 4.5 four minutes if possible. I'll let the footage play until we get to the first encounter. So I accidentally forgot to start on my solar subclass, but you'll want to be solar initially. The way you want to approach the first encounter is by jumping up onto these rocks to the left as soon as you enter, and using this vantage point to take out the Vandal Sniper in the back left of the room as quick as you can. Immediately after, you should break this captain's shield and kill him as well. Sometimes he gets stuck floating there and it's hilarious, but you won't always be that lucky. He'll throw his blight attack at you non-stop, and it's really annoying if you don't kill him fast. Using the blight as cover, you can take out the Vandal on the opposite side of the room and then work on the second captain in the back. After all of them are down you'll need to take out the thrall on the floor. Try and round them up as best you can and take out as many as you can with your grenade. Don't let them swarm you because it doesn't take much for them to kill you. Try and kill them all but once most of them are dead the second wave of enemies will spawn. When you hear or see them spawning in, head back to our safe spot behind the blight where we snipe the vandals. Use it as cover again to take out the vandals in front of you, and if you see a goblin, focus on him. The goblins will shield the vandals, so if you can get rid of them first, it will make your life a lot easier. Work your way around the room, taking out the vandals and goblins, and if you die, it's completely fine. One or two deaths at each encounter won't set you back too far. Once you've killed every enemy in here, enter Encounter 2. This is where you'll want to pop your solar super. If it's something like Blade Barrage where you use all of the super at once, round up the enemies in a group and then use it. If you didn't use it all, you can actually head to the next room and quickly try and take out the annoying knight immediately to the right. After your super is used up, you'll want to switch to an arc super. Luckily it worked out for me and Arc Strider was able to kill these guys.
So for encounter three, you can actually drop down and hide to the right of the taken launcher behind you so that it doesn't push you out. Hiding in this little crevice will allow you to break the knight's shields and hopefully snipe him before his fire attack gets to you. If you can, finish off the knight to the right if you didn't already. If he's surrounded by acolytes, don't even bother for now. Now jump to where the knight we killed earlier was standing and stand at the very front part of this platform. Standing at the front, try and take out the knight across from you. If he shoots fire, wait until the fire is about to land and then back up. It will allow you to avoid the fire attack only once and this should give you enough time to snipe him. If he shoots fire again, it will reach all the way to the back and probably burn you. Next thing you want to do is take out the goblin snipers along the back wall. After that, switch to your void weapon and work on the wizard shields. Break them, then snipe them. You'll be able to get two from this vantage point. Sometimes another goblin will sneak out from hiding, take him out as well. After you've killed the two wizards, focus on killing the acolytes beneath you. Sometimes you'll be able to pop their shields, sometimes they'll hide in the blights. It's kind of up to RNG. If you can kill them, switch back to your solar weapon and head across from where you were standing to get a view of the last knight. I forgot about this on my run, but there's a little cave here that allows you to get a great shot at the knight and it will be hard for him to hit you in here. Watch out for the thrall dudes running around from the final wizard. After you get the knight down, you'll want to switch back to your void weapon and sit above the wizard here so that the thrall can't get to you. If you didn't kill that knight in the very beginning of the room to the right, now is a good time to do it once all the enemies are dead. It's a pain in the ass because he's tucked into the corner there and it's very hard to get him, but go back to the cave where we sniped that one knight and sitting there you should be able to get a pretty good shot on him. After all of the enemies are dead, pop this blight next to you and approach the next room. It's best to take out the initial sniper here and then run up to the next room but immediately turn around and jump past the two taken phalanxes that spawn in. Get some distance between them, throw a grenade if you can, and take them out ASAP. Once they're dead, all you need to do is take out the remaining two snipers and you can jump down the hole after shooting the blight barrier a few times. If you're running low on special ammo, sometimes killing these scions can drop some, but it is a pretty big time waster to sit here and kill all of them. Now we're at the final room. You want to be here with 7 to 9 minutes left. 7 being the very minimum and a little over 9 minutes being probably the best you can hope for. Anything below 7 minutes and you'll probably need perfect RNG to beat this fight. As soon as you drop down, change to your arc auto rifle or SMG. It doesn't have to be arc, but like I mentioned before, it might come in handy. And start destroying the front two blights here. After both front blights are down, sneak around through this tunnel to the right, regain some health, and then work on the blight in the middle of the room.
If you are able to, destroy the Blight in the very back of the room as well, which will prevent the Taken Cabal boss from hiding in it. Next thing you want to do is use your Arc Super to get rid of as many enemies as you can. Focus on the Majors with the Arc Shields. After all of the enemies in this first wave are dead, the first boss and a bunch of adds will spawn. Run back to where we dropped down and hide back here for pretty much the whole fight. Notice how I didn't use any heavy throughout the entire mission? Yeah, that's cause heavy ammo never drops. And we need every shot for this final encounter. It will be annoying as hell to fight this first boss because when he throws his blight attacks, he does this head ducking thing and it makes it really difficult to get crits. Wait until after he ducks his head and then shoot him with a sleeper. It should stagger him and you'll be able to get another shot or two in before he goes to throw another blight. You'll want to get him pretty low and save a few sleeper rounds for the next boss. Try and finish him off with your sniper if you can. Once he's down, turn your attention to the easiest boss on the left, the Taken Knight. Empty the remaining sleeper shots into him, and then immediately switch to your Polaris Lance. If you're on PC, you can simply switch to your Pulse Rifle if you'd like. Now all we're going to do is sit as far back in here as we can, and shoot non-stop at his head. You should keep proccing the perfect fifth perk for the explosions, and shouldn't ever run out of ammo as long as you keep hitting crits. This strategy was actually the way I was able to beat the mission for the very first time. Once the Scout Rifle bug is fixed, this should be even more reliable. After he's dead, you might want to scavenge for some special ammo if you can. It'll most likely be a suicide run, so do your best just to get the ammo. Now, all we have to do is kill the final Taken Cabal dude. This guy is also very annoying because he loves to walk back and forth on either side of this pillar. Every time you look at him, he'll try and move back to the other side. If you didn't destroy the blight in the very back, sometimes he'll wander back there and try and hide in it. In this case, you'll need to run out there and try and grab his attention to pull him out. Try and make the most of the time he's standing out in the open. This doesn't happen often, so you'll want to try and stagger him and get as much damage as you possibly can on him. When you
he get his health down to about three quarters or half of one bar, this is when you want to use your super on him. If you have some time left, keep doing damage with Polaris Lance just to be sure. That should do it and you should be able to kill him. Not a bad run for me, I've had better but the boss round went pretty smoothly. A few deaths and I still finished with a minute on the clock left exactly. Like I said, this is going to take some practice, don't give up though. If the time is running out, just focus and do damage. You'll likely never finish with much more than a minute, even on a perfect run, so even though it looks like you're running out of time, just keep going. Hopefully this was helpful for all of you solo players out there who want to get the Whisper of the Worm, but are tired of seeing guides on how to beat the mission with the Whisper itself. I get questions from people all the time asking for help or asking for tips on how to beat it solo. Well, this is for you guys. Thank you very much for watching, guys.